Hi everyone, it's me. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Alana and I'm a Canadian, but I have been living here in the UK for the last six years. And today we are going to talk about 28 British things the whole world needs. Yes, 28. I hope you're sitting down. So without further ado, Let's go. Number one, we have Yorkshire tea. Now, as a Canadian, I was never a tea drinker, but I have been slowly but surely converted. And if I'm going to have a cuppa here in the UK or in any country, to be honest, I want it to be Yorkshire. <laughs> and to be honest, I can't really tell a difference between like the fancy gold label Yorkshire and just like the regular red label <laughs> Yorkshire. I obviously don't have that much of like a palette when it comes to tea yet, but I would like Yorkshire and I honestly think the whole world should have some too. Number two, we have free museums. Now, one of the reasons I love going into London is the fact that A, so much to do, so much to do, so much to see, so much to eat, so much to drink. Every time I go to London, I see something new. But one of the biggest draws for me personally are the museums. And London has honestly some of the best museums I've ever been to. And they're free. How incredible. Now, typically most of the museums will have a free entry, but you can pay or if you are a member, you can go to like these special exhibits, which is fair. You know, if you want to pay, you can get the, the special, maybe limited time stuff. But for the general population to be able to go to a massive museum like the British Museum for free and you can walk around, you can spend as much time there is honestly, truly wonderful. And I wish more countries did that. Number three, we have a full English. There is something so truly wonderful about a fry up. Um, whether you are hungover or not, because it, it is a good hungover food, the fry up, the full English, truly one of the best things ever. Now, to be honest, here's my perfect full English. And I know people are gonna yell at me, but I don't care. Toast, obviously, baked beans, sausage, bacon, egg, ideally fried. Black pudding, I'm okay with, but I don't really care if it's there or not. I don't want the mushrooms and I don't really want the tomatoes either, but I will have some sort of like hash brown if available. I know lots of people say hash browns are too American, you shouldn't have them. They're fabulous. And if I have the option to have a hash brown in my full English, I'm gonna take that. But I think the whole world could benefit from having a fry up. <laughs> Maybe not our arteries, perhaps, with the amount of fried food within one plate. Maybe not, but it is truly delicious. Number four, we have comedy shows. Now, the UK is home to so many funny TV shows, and specifically, we're talking about comedy shows or like comedy panel type shows. They're one of my favorite things here in the UK. I wish other countries had them. Canada certainly does not. So shows like Have I Got News For You, Taskmaster, Would I Lie To You, Mock The Week, all those types of eight out of 10 cats does countdown. They're funny, they're absurd, they're a bit ridiculous, they are so, they don't take themselves seriously and they're truly, truly funny. And I wish more countries had that kind of stuff. Number five, Cadbury chocolate. Now you may be able to buy Cadbury chocolate in your country, but it may not be real. <laughs> so because like food laws and ingredient regulations and, and food processing and all that kind of stuff differs from country to country. If you buy Cadbury, say in America or in Canada, you may not be getting the type of Cadbury that is available here in the UK. And to be honest, the Cadbury here is just truly divine. As much as I love like chocolate bars and sweets and all that kind of fun stuff, there is something to be said about just a original dairy milk I wish I had one right now. 
So if you are coming to the UK, maybe to live like I am, or you are coming for a holiday or something, definitely try out the Cadbury here because more likely than not, it's going to be different than what's available back home. Number six, we have to talk about Yorkshire puddings. Now Yorkshire puddings are one of my favorites. I actually did a video a long time ago trying to make my very own Yorkshire puddings. I just love them, especially when they get like a little bit crispy, like a little bit crunchy, but they're soft on the inside. They're just one of those things that I could eat so many of them until I made myself sick. <laughs> and if you aren't from the UK, if you're watching this from another country in the world, hi, how's it going? Please give Yorkshire puddings a try. They are simple and yet difficult to make, but something about a homemade Yorkshire, you can't beat it. And in my humble opinion, all big dinners should have Yorkshire, whether that's Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving, please, we gotta add Yorkshires. <laughs> They're so good. Number seven, we have the sheer amount of accents. One of the things I love about living in the UK is the, the diverse accents. And I'm not talking about, you know, English versus Scottish. I'm talking about village versus village. There are so many different accents and so many variations. And something about that is just really exciting. Now, of course, countries will have a varying accent. Canada is a huge place. Not all Canadians sound the same, but you have to travel like quite a long distance to hear a Canadian voice that is different from your own. Whereas here in the UK, you take the train for like 20 minutes, half an hour, an hour and oh my goodness, you are going to hear so many different voices. And to me, that's something that I find that's really exciting and fun and kind of scary sometimes because let me tell you, I can't tell you how many situations I've been in when I don't understand what someone's saying. <laughs> Hey everyone, did you know that I love the UK so much I created a business about it? Edenbridge is a business my partner and I started, we're extremely proud of it, and we create handmade fragrances inspired by places and people of history. With a very large focus on Kent, my new second home. If you wanna check it out, go to edenbridge.co.uk. The entire thing is created and run and designed and everything by my partner and I. And two personal favorites real quick, if you're interested at all. The first one is Chartwell. It is inspired by Winston Churchill's home here in Kent. It's very like leathery and smoky. And if I close my eyes, it makes me think of like a brown leather chair in a home library with a cigar and a bit of scotch, you know, like just, Smoky, leathery, it's beautiful. Another personal favorite is Great Expectations, which is inspired by Rochester and Charles Dickens' influence. It is woody, but also citrusy. So I love it. I wear it all the time. My partner also wears it. You know, it's a unisex one. But um, yeah, so we create these fragrances ourselves. We have these larger bottles. We also have the smaller ones if you're not too sure, but it's something that we are really proud of. Um, if you wanna check it out, edenbridge.co.uk. Anyway, back to the video. Number eight, we have fish and chips, but specifically fish and chips as fast food. Now in Canada, I remember my dad and I would get fish and chips on like a special occasion, but I remember it would take so long. It was more like a restaurant kind of thing and less like a takeout kind of thing, if that makes sense. But here in the UK, I mean, for better or for worse, it kind of is questionable sometimes, but you can go to a fish and chip shop and get absolutely delicious fish and chips far quicker than you ever should. But there is something that is so nice about just a wonderful fish and chip, especially like if you're, again, maybe a little bit hungover, or if you're just tired or you're exhausted or you've had a bad day, or you haven't had fish and chips in forever, you go to your local fish and chip shop, they wrap it all up for you in paper, you bring it on home and you just have a wonderful time. I truly love it. And you know what? Maybe I'm gonna do that tonight. <laughs> Maybe I'm gonna have vision chips tonight. Number 
Nine on our list of British things that the whole world needs is one of my favorite greetings, and that's hiya. So here in the UK, I have now started saying hiya as my greeting. You hear it a lot, and honestly, there's something about it that I just truly love. It's cute, it's sweet, it's friendly, it's just wonderful. So instead of saying hey, or hi, or hello, it's so much more natural for me now to say hiya, hiya, hiya. It's just, I love it. And I wish more countries did it too. And if you're watching this from a different country, give it a try. You might find out that you like it, because to me, I love it. Number 10, we have the sheer amount of insults. Now the Brits are extremely clever. They're funny, they're clever, and they are a bit brutal sometimes. Now I don't want to lose my YouTube channel, so we're not going to perhaps dive into them too deeply, but the sheer amount of creative, unbelievable, ridiculous insults here in the UK is something that I truly love. Whether they're used as banter among friends or they are used as genuine insults, there are so many clever ways to insult someone. And if we did um, a video covering all British insults, honestly, it would be days long. There are so many, they're so creative, there's so many different variations, I just love it. One that I get called quite a bit in the comments is a personal favorite, is daft cow. <laughs> um, brutal, yes, but it is a wonderful insult, so. You gotta look on the bright side, right? Number 11, we have holiday time. This is something that I really struggle coming to terms with should I ever move back to Canada. Back home, typically workers get 10 days paid vacation for a whole year. 10. Here in the UK, typically, you can start out with 28 days paid vacation. That's right, truly wonderful. And it is something that I wish more countries would follow suit, okay? Give people more paid holiday, please. Because it's one of those things, like if I were to move back to Canada and I would have to go back to 10 days, that's a struggle for a whole year, 10. No, thank you. Number 12, we have cheese. Yes, the UK has some absolutely incredible cheese. And as someone who personally eats too much cheese, I love it, the, the amount of variety of cheese, the high quality cheese, but also the cost of cheese here. When I last went back to Canada, I was absolutely shocked at the price of cheese. And to be honest, the quality, not very good. Here in the UK, maybe it's not something you'd think of when you think of the UK, but we have so many wonderful cheeses, local cheeses, British cheese, just, Wonderful. One of my favorite like everyday cheeses <laughs> right now is, I believe it's called David Stow Mature. It's the one in the blue package. I get it from Tesco. I love it. It's a gorgeous British cheese. It's completely reasonably priced. It lasts me a long time. And I just feel very lucky to be able to have such good cheese whenever I want. Number 13, we have pub culture, a very British ingrained culture <laughs> that I absolutely love. I wish more places had it. Even if you don't drink that much, going to the pub is such a community vibe. You can hang out. It, it's not necessarily like a bar culture we have in North America. You can go there with your family. You can hang out. You can maybe watch the football. You can have a pint, maybe a new cider that you haven't had before. And it's just like a wonderfully comforting, happy, community, friendly vibe that I just love. Number 14, we have decent Public transport. Currently, I do not have a car and that is okay. I can get by with public transport, which is something that I never dreamed of in Canada. It just doesn't happen. But here, it does. Now, is it perfect? No, of course not. Sometimes I just can't quite get to places that I want to, or is it, say, I wanna train up north. It starts to get extremely expensive, but the fact that the public transport actually works 
wonderful. And with that, the public transport in London is probably the best public transport I've ever experienced. You have absolutely no reason to have a car in London, whether you're living there, whether you're coming for a visit, working holiday, whatever, the public transport in the UK, but very specifically the London, oh my God, incredible. Honestly, probably best in the world. Number 15, we have Sunday roast. Now, not all Sunday roasts are created equal. It really depends on where you go. But if you find that beautiful, like authentic homemade Sunday roast, and it better have Yorkshire's, there's few things better. Number 16, we have historic, beautiful architecture. This is something that in my day-to-day -day life in England that I will never get enough of because it is not something that we really have back home in Canada. We're not old enough to have the beautiful historic architecture available here. You see pubs built into old churches. You see post office built into like a 500 year old building. Like they are everywhere. They are, it's just beautiful. And it's something that's so exciting, like visually. I'm so used to as a Canadian, just like big square buildings, you know, you'll get like a big Walmart. It's just a giant rectangle. And it looks very similar to all other Walmarts. It's built in a certain way or um, just like, architecture that is very convenient and that is built a certain way for a purpose, but it is nowhere aesthetically pleasing, like at all. Number 17, one of the best British things that the whole world needs. Well, you're never far from the seaside. And yes, land mass may play a part in this, but there is something really exciting and wonderful that you're never that far from the sea. So whether you take the train out to the coast for an afternoon or you wanna do some sightseeing or you wanna go down to the coast and have an ice cream, it's totally doable. And coming from a massive country like Canada, it's really not that doable. It really depends on where you live. Number 18, uh, British things that the whole world should have is humor. The Brits have a very interesting sense of humor. It's something that I really relate to, something that I appreciate. Maybe not everybody appreciates, I think it's fair to say that, but the sense of humor here is wonderful and I think that it plays a huge part in why I love the comedy TV shows here in the UK. Very funny, very ridiculous, very self-deprecating, just wonderful. And with that, number 19 is British TV, not even including comedy. Like if you take comedy out, British TV is so varied and it is so high quality. It's something that I truly love. And if, unfortunately for Canada, we do not have that many Canadian based TV shows that are necessarily high quality. We don't even really have that much to begin with, but there is something to be said about British TV that is just in a league of its own. Number 20, the NHS. Now, the NHS is not without its issues and certainly in the last couple of years, those issues perhaps have gotten much worse, but there is something to be said about having this style of healthcare available is something that is really special and it's something that needs to be protected. And I do feel very privileged to have access to it here in the UK. I think of, you know, my American friends and family back in the US, that is something that is quite um, scary to be honest. And it's a huge reason why I would never move to the US is the healthcare. Um, it's, yeah, it's just scary really. And I think the NHS is something that we really need to be grateful for and we need to do our part to protect it because other countries are not as fortunate. 21, I've already mentioned it. Did you catch it? Cider. <laughs> The UK has some unbelievably beautiful cider. They are easily accessible. They are reasonably priced. There are literally hundreds of different kinds here, whether it's a cider brand or a cider flavor. There are so many. One of my favorite things, and I tell all foreigners, in like any foreigner based video, go to the pub, get your pub culture, maybe get like a Sunday roast as well 
And also try as many local ciders as you can. You will never be able to try them all, but honestly, it is so much fun. And currently that is my drink of choice. If I go out, if I go to the pub or a restaurant or literally anywhere there's gonna be alcohol, what kind of British ciders do you have? Because I'll take all of them. Number 22, we have mild weather. Now I will complain about the weather <laughs> because I've lived here long enough to do so. But on the whole, the weather here is pretty mild. And I am very grateful that we don't have winters like I'm used to back in Ontario. It's very rare to get snow here, which in my humble opinion, I love. I don't want snow, okay? I don't want snow. While it is still cold and miserable and dark in the wintertime, it, realistically, you might see zero degrees, three degrees and I call my mom back home and she's like, yeah, it's minus 18 today. And I'm like, oh God. <laughs> so we do have a pretty mild weather variants. We do get all the seasons, which is great. And I do like having a little bit of each season, but nothing too extreme. Saying that though, we did have the hottest day on record this summer. So maybe we need to rethink this point in a couple years. <laughs> Number 23, we have history literally everywhere. Now I wrote this down so I wouldn't get it wrong. Currently there are 33 UNESCO World Heritage Sites in the United Kingdom and the British Overseas Territories. Now currently that includes one in both England and Scotland, plus 18 in England, five in Scotland, four in Wales, one in Northern Ireland, and one in each of the overseas territories. So an unbelievable amount of history and it's literally just everywhere. And even if it's not a UNESCO World Heritage site, like it's not an official site, there is so much history just embedded around the towns and villages. It's, as a Canadian, it's really hard to comprehend. Like this building is a couple hundred years old. Um, recently I went to Canterbury, you know, just for a day out, got some lunch. There are um, Roman floor tiles in Canterbury. Um, there's a museum that is really cool where there you can actually see the original mosaics that the Romans laid down. Um, and that's just like, hey, by the way, Here's some Roman tiles, not to mention the castles, the cathedrals, the architecture, the historic buildings. They are just absolutely everywhere. And it's one of the things that I just never get tired of. Number 24 is the beautiful countryside. A lot of people think of London when they think of the UK, which I think is kind of a shame because London is certainly not represent representative of the United Kingdom. But one of the things that I think is, is the beautiful countryside. There's tons of it, rolling hills. It's always green because of the, the mild climate. Even in the wintertime, you're gonna have these beautiful green rolling hills. The countryside is just really something that deserves to be explored. Our 25th British thing that the whole world needs. Well, as a Canadian, this is something that drives me crazy about Canada. But in the UK, when you see a price tag, it's the full price. When you see a price tag, that is the price. That includes the tax. That is not something that happens in Canada, which drives me insane. <laughs> I just hate it. And I always forget. So when I go back, I'm like buying stuff and then it's so much more expensive than I thought it was because the price is not the full price. The tag does not include tax. Here in the UK, that does not happen. <laughs> and I love it. Number 26, we have the public right of way. This is something that again, I think is truly wonderful. I wish more places had it. And essentially there are pathways and walkways and like hiking trails and stuff that give people the right of way, whether you cross onto someone's public property or private property rather or not, these are like protected right of way. So with that, you get some unbelievable walks and hikes here in the UK that are protected. They don't get closed off because somebody builds a house or whatever. You still maintain that right of way. And it is a great way to see the countryside which is absolutely beautiful. And hopefully 
If you want to do a, a hike in true British fashion, you hike, you see the countrysides, you use the public access, the, the right of way, and you finish at the pub. Number 27, something that I actually really love, has to do with taxes. Now in Canada, when you are employed and in America, you have to file your own taxes. So even though you are employed, maybe at a nine to five job, it is your responsibility to file your own taxes and they do not make it easy. And they do that on purpose. So back home, you usually have to have some sort of tax program that you have to buy to be able to easily submit your own taxes. Here in the UK, when you are employed, so I have an employer, I have a job, they submit my tax for me. So my paycheck is deducted the tax, it's deducted you know, national insurance and all that kind of stuff. And I do not need to file those taxes myself. It's something that I absolutely love. I wish North America would do it. I don't think they ever will. So I'm going to appreciate it while I have it. Number 28, if you've lasted this long, wow, thank you so much. If you want to subscribe, that'd be pretty cool, but no worries. If not, 28, we have cheap mobile plans. Now, currently I have a mobile plan with three, which I haven't had any issues with three before. If you're looking for a company, this is obviously not sponsored, but I haven't had any issues with them. My plan is 10 pounds a month. I get unlimited talk, text, and I think I get like 10 gigabytes of data. And to be honest, that's more than enough for me. I work from home, so I don't really need that much data each month, but it is only 10 pounds. Awesome. Compared to Canada, and I'm sure any Canadians watching this will know, the price of mobile plans is absolutely through the roof. It's disgusting. When my mom told me how much she pays, I almost cried. So there is something to be said about having accessible mobile plans, especially like, I mean, in this day and age, you pretty much need to have something. And if it is too expensive for you to even think about having, that's messed up. So I'm, I'm very grateful that the overall mobile plans and the cost of mobile plans here in the UK is extremely reasonable. Now the UK is not perfect. <laughs> it's not perfect. You and I both know that it's not perfect, but there are so many wonderful things about living here and so many wonderful British things that I wish more people had access to. If you like this video and you wanna watch more videos, which would be totally awesome, why not check out this one where I share misconceptions I had about the UK. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching and until next time, bye.